Welcome to podcast number two with Idea to Launch and Minnesota Starter. I am here uh, with you today. My name is Lisa Zufall, the founder of Idea to Launch, and we um, we empower the dreamers by matchmaking them with the uh, resources that they need to bring their idea to life. And uh, with me today is my cohort in... Uh... Hi. Uh, <laughs> I am Sarah Wick with Idea to Launch. I am the launch director. A uh, big role of what I do is helping startups and entrepreneurs really figure out what their job is. Um, because as we know, in the startup community, you wear many, many hats. And so uh, you don't have to wear those hats alone. Awesome. And our guest today is Allie from Minnesota Starter. And we are so excited to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. I'm excited to be here and talk you about bet. MinStarter and what it is we do for Minnesota businesses and Minnesota investors. As, as people are learning about Minnesota Starter, um, they are they are excited about the possibilities that are that have just opened up because there's some big possibilities um, that they have now outside of just getting a loan or finding a a general investor or an angel investor. So what what are the benefits of MinStarter? Yeah, I think it's really exciting that people that are looking for seed stage capital, especially, you know, operating capital and just getting getting up and going, have this alternative way to find new funding. Yeah. So in, instead of, you know, those typical means and vehicles that you just mentioned, yeah. now you have this really widened pool opened up to you so that you can go out to any Minnesota resident and say, hey, I'm looking for the startup capital. Come and support my business and yeah. check out the terms. And they don't have to be accredited investors. That's they right. are friends, family, your neighbors. Anyone in Minnesota yes. can invest in your business cool. through an um, invest offering on MinStarter. And so what that means is that those accredited investors that you were talking about I think it's important to define who those are. So an accredited investor is anyone that has an annual income of $200,000 or more or $300,000 if you're considering a joint income with a spouse mm -hmm. and uh, over a million dollars in liquid assets, not including your uh, primary home. Mm -hmm. So that means that that's a small percentage of the population that that has um, that accredited investor um, it, that is in that category. And so now that we are able to seek investment from any Minnesotan, right, that opens it up so much more. And, you know, it's 3% of the population that is an accredited investor. And now it's 100% of the population that you right. can go out to and say, you know, come invest in my business and come along this growth journey with me. Is there a limit? So if Let's say that you have a startup and you post some in starter and I want to support you. So is there a limit to what I can give you or there there is if you are a non-accredited investor. Okay. So the limit for how much you can invest in a business's campaign is ten thousand dollars. If you are an accredited investor, you don't have any sort of limits and you can invest however much you would like. So who is the best person for Minnesota Starter? A lot of businesses that are retail businesses, you know, retail restaurants, retail breweries, um, locations that are in a community that people can go into, touch, feel, you know, get behind not only from an investment perspective, but mm -hmm. also become a customer and become right. an evangelist. Um, you know, these businesses that are able to, one, demonstrate a potential return coming back for their investors. That's always, you know, foundationally a, a good uh, outlay for an opportunity right. to invest. And then really, you know, who, how are you going to be able to, as a business, business, um, leverage that Minnesota residents are part of your success story, part of your growth story. Yeah. And there's a reason why you are doing a MinVest offering, you know, making sure that Minnesotans are having this exclusive right to invest in your company. And that's, I think, a really big piece right. of your overall narrative that's important yeah. to identify. Mm -hmm. How are these businesses using their MinStarter money? What is What are a couple of the ways that you're really seeing um the money being used, I guess. Yeah. When we have conversations with people looking to raise funds, there's usually a few commonalities of them. And and one, which is really encouraging to us, is that they want to hire people. They want to they yeah. get more jobs in, right. the, in the economy, which is super fantastic to hear. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of this is operating capital to you know bring on new equipment and then hiring people so that they can actually go on and execute their growth goals, either bringing them on as full-time employees or hiring you know more business consultants or other types of services right. to help them. Um, with their, you know, achieve their, their plans. Right. 
crowdfunding has come to mean so many different right. types of things. And people uh, are going to take their associations and, and make the assumptions based on that when you just talk about crowdfunding. So it's Absolutely. important to figure out what we're exactly we're talking about here. Right. So there's uh, rewards-based crowdfunding, which is like Kickstarter, for example, you know, came back, came out in, I think it's 2009, where backers provide uh, small amounts of money that, you know, through a pool of a lot of small amounts of money, you get a larger amount that will be backing, you know, a product or a project, something like that. But there's no... Um, promise for a return on that and on, on that back you might get a t-shirt t-shirt you might get a name credit you might get a pre-sale order something like that it's uh in exchange for a reward mm -hmm. then we have donation-based crowdfunding which is like a gofundme site or something like that where people are you know putting in dollar amounts but they're not anticipating anything in return there's no t-shirt you know there's no um, name credit and there's definitely um not you know a plan to get a return or financial return on that then, um, more recently, we're, now we're talking about investment crowdfunding, and that is where equity crowdfunding and right. uh, debt crowdfunding comes to play. And this is really where people are offering securities in their company, which is that you know a guarantee or you know a, an outlay for a return on that investment. And so, um, both equity and debt um, crowdfunding is what we're talking about with investment crowdfunding. Both of those types of um, vehicles for raising funds are available uh, to raise on MidStarter. And let's let's talk about that a little bit. So equity is equity within your company. So that's stock. That's so right. when I invest, I will get equity. That's right. Or An ownership the, share in the company. And the debt that you're talking about is I am going to loan you the money and you will pay me back with interest. You got it. Funding. That's right. Because there's a lot of confusion about what's debt and what's equity. So let's make sure that. So you guys offer both. Right. And uh, not only that we offer both, we enable both. So awesome. the, the businesses that are looking to raise funds, they make the decisions and say, you know, what's best for our growth plans? They work with their finance team, with their legal team, and they figure out, is an equity offering best for my growth goals? Or is a debt-based offering best for my growth goals? Or, you know, a combination of the two. There's many different vehicle structures of offerings out there that I recommend you get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. And yes. <laughs> get a lawyer. And, and, and make sure that your uh, just the decisions that you're making for your offering are going to be able to support your plans and your yeah. long-term growth. What's best for your business. That's right. A, a huge part of why the MinStarter team is so excited about being able to provide these online tools for people to get involved. We have a great startup community here in Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, not only in the Twin Cities, but all around the state. And we want to make sure that right. you know this uh, new way of raising funds is as accessible as possible. And those folks that don't quite yet have a million dollars, they're still able to participate in that growth and really invest in their communities, in their neighborhoods, and overall in our state. We have the sky's the limit, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And Very the beautiful cool. thing is, is we're talking all of Minnesota, not just the Twin Cities, all of Minnesota. So right. there are dreamers in every nook and cranny across the state. That's right. And those dreamers probably have a notebook filled with ideas, just hoping <laughs> that someday they can make those ideas come to life, but they have no idea where to get started. The big question that we always get is, you know, I work full time. I have a mortgage. I have kids. I don't have the money. Enter Men Starter, where you could do crowdfunding right in your, I mean, it's the whole Minnesota, but you can then have these, uh, I don't know, maybe little events to tell the community about what you've got going on that's going to benefit that community so much. You can, um, yes. Which and, is really fun. And so it, it can be, um, you know, a legacy business, you know, a mom and pop retail store or something like this. But it can also be, you know, potentially it's a, a solar energy company where right. you want to, you know, join the resistance. <laughs> you want to provide <laughs> infrastructure, uh, you know, more infrastructure in the energy um, area to your community. And then there's a way to have everyone invest in that and everyone really shares on that return then. Um, we want to get to people. We want to get conversations going with anybody that's in an idea stage uh, and beyond, because right. we want to give all of the information so that mm -hmm. they know what's coming and what to expect if they're looking for many different types of funding. And you should explore all different types of funding if you're looking, you know, to grow your business. You need to find the right fit for yep. your business. Look at all the options yep. and then see which one fits you the best. That's right. And, and with your goals. And if you are looking into crowdfunding, then we want to make sure that you are prepared for both the campaign setup is, is mm -hmm. a piece of it. And then also, you know, managing your campaign and then managing your investors once you do secure investment and you start that long-term relationship. Right. So let's start at the campaign. If you're campaigning, that means that you are trying to get the word out about what you have going on 
-hmm. You are trying to put as much effort around your men's starter campaign as possible because the only way that you are going to get money, people, is letting people know that you want money. (laughs) Is that a true statement? You've got to ask for it. Yes, get the message out there. And then you have to maintain it. So you can't just come out of the door, you know, blazing saddles and then you know a week later you're like oh i'm so done (laughs) i think i'm gonna take a nap you've got to keep that momentum going you do so uh, a big piece of the conversation as we're going through discovery with folks and letting them know you know from uh expectation standpoint what are the different activities that you need to do to set up your campaign some of that some of those activities are going to be talking about legal of course it's going to be talking about finance considerations of course you know administrative what does it take to actually put all of these different components together and then a huge piece of it is the marketing piece so what are those activities that you have planned to get the word out there right Mm -hmm. have you thought Mm -hmm. about these types of things in addition to just saying hey i need money what's your plan to do it? We'll give right. you the tools and you know the, the URL that you can host all of your information. You have right. your media up there, your narrative, your legal documents, the actual offering for people to go through and take a look at. Uh, but you got to have a plan and you got to have a plan to manage that plan. Right. <laughs> so Allie touched on it. Um, and I just want to drive it home that MinStarter is more than just saying, Hey, uh, I am going to come up with the next biggest, greatest Sarah's doodads, and here's what I want to do. Boom. It's up there. Give me money. Um, MinStarter does so much more than say, okay, uh, here's your website. Have fun. Um, They're really setting you up for success. They're making sure that if you put something out there that really they, they, I and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys really have Minnesota's interest at heart here for these dreamers who need to raise money, making sure, hey, did you think about all these other aspects? You need a business plan. You have to understand your financials. That's right. Yes. Uh, you know, we are a public benefit corporation. Mm-hmm. And so our entire you know, existence is making sure that there is a benefit to the Minnesota community. And we wanted to make sure that we not only provide these online tools to you know, to actually transact these campaigns, but we provide a network of people and resources to make sure that people get set up for success here. So we want to make sure that they are contacting the right legal folks, that they are taking into consideration, you know, they've got a solid business plan. It's up to date and they can, (laughs) you know, make sure that it's going to reflect the different numbers that they're presenting to their investors as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And okay, so here's here's the big one. How long has MinStarter been around? We've been around as a concept ever since the MinVest legislation came you know, into effect in June of 2016. Okay. Um, at the end of 2016, that's when we really started seeing these portals that are required. These portals are websites that you can list on. And that's when we started seeing them be approved by the Minnesota Department of Commerce, which is the regulating body for these interstate crowdfunding offerings here in Minnesota. So we have been officially launched since January of 2017. Awesome. Yes. Yes, we're really excited. Excellent. Yeah. Here here's the one thing that I know is if you don't raise your money, your or yeah, didn't we talk about this? If you you set your benchmark for the minimum that you want to raise. And if you don't raise that, you don't get anything. That's right. So as you're setting out your goals for yourself, and this is part of the campaign setup and planning, you are setting your uh, how much you would like to raise. You're going to set a minimum of how much you would like to raise, and you're going to set a maximum so that your investors can see, you know, at what point are they going to be able to take this money and really implement it into their plan. So let's take some numbers and say, you know, if I'm going to raise a minimum of a hundred thousand dollars and a maximum of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, I need to reach that hundred thousand dollar mark and able to get access to those funds. Mm-hmm. As you're raising these funds, every um, every offer of investment you can accept or decline. If you accept them, those funds are going to be held in an escrow account until you meet that minimum goal. And you guys are there to guide them. So if they if somebody does come up to you and say, I want to do a $100 minimum and a million dollar maximum, you can say, now, let's look at this. Let's take <laughs> a come back to a beat. Let's That's figure out you know what you're going to do with it. And you know if it does make sense within your plans, all the better. But you're going to be able, uh, you're going to need to address and defend the decisions that you make right. for your business. So right. once you do launch these campaigns, you have your uh, your offering set up. It is live, let's say, and every every investor gets the same terms, right? They're they're all disclosed there in your legal documents, and they do have an opportunity to contact you with questions. You need to be available to answer those questions, be honest, and be really forthright with your answers and saying, you know, 
this is how we've decided to do it and this is why we've decided to do it and this is how it's going to work. And I think that that goes across the board, whether you're talking to a bank or an investor one-on-one, if you're not honest and straightforward about what you've got going on, you're not going to get funding. (laughs) Game Uh, over. Yeah, yeah, it really is true. And you want to make sure, um, from an honesty standpoint, just remind me of, you know, the team behind the business. Mm -hmm. You're not only, well, as investors are taking a look at the opportunity, they're going to be looking at the business plan. They're going to be looking at the return. They are really going to be looking at the team behind the business because with a lot of these early stage companies, that's, what you're, you know, you're betting on the jockey <laughs> in a little bit more than the horse, right? So right. you want to make sure that you are um, presenting what your experience is as a business owner, you know, how it has led up to um, this point with a new business and how your uh, background is going to be able to help you um, actually achieve those plans that you've set out and those goals for not only yourself, but for your investors too. That's awesome. And you know what? I did some research on Allie. Did you? What did you find? You have an amazing background, oh, and thank I, you. I think these folks should know about your, well, I, I was looking at the different startups that you've been a part of, and um, just your growth. To it, it seems like your path has led you to this place today, and yeah. so I was just kind of <laughs> wondering, because when you go and talk to Allie, um, she knows her stuff. Yeah, so when you walk into the room, you better be prepared, people. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> or if you're not, she'll very... She's so guide kind. You in the yes. right direction. So she'll help you. Yes, I will guide the conversation if necessary. But tell us about the the startups that you've been a part of. Sure. So I've uh, I kind of dipped my toe by uh, jumping in the water as well um, into a uh, as a co-founder to a mobile uh, tech startup here in the Twin Cities called Do Drinks. So that was back in 2012 with a, a co-founder named Brianna Fisher. We were incubated at the University of St. Thomas School of Entrepreneurship there, and that was a mobile loyalty app that uh, worked. It sounds awesome in the beverage industry. Yeah, it was a really cool way to send uh, drinks to friends. That have checked into different you know bars and restaurants and things like that and pay with your mobile phone mm-hmm. and then we were building in different loyalty pieces based on you know what you were purchasing and influencing at the point of sale and that sort of thing um really and really fun to get into and i and i started doing you know some um uh, customer feedback cycles and loops and you know partner uh partnership building and, and that sort of thing it was really fun we um had I think we ran that for about a year and a half until we closed our doors. We ran out of funding. I wish we could have done crowdfunding at that point because Mm -hmm. there was a lot of social momentum there and a lot of uh, interest that I think we would have been able to turn into financial capital as well. Right. Uh, But after that, I just had to stay in mobile startups. And so I've worked with a couple of different um, groups of folks as an individual contributor, just helping um, the leadership teams get things set up from an right. uh, operations standpoint, making sure that they have the right metrics in place for growing mobile and software businesses and that sort of thing. So it's been really fun since then. I've worked with probably a handful of um, organizations um, up until now. And part of what I have been able to do is both work with community builders um, to build my personal and professional network. And I realized we have such great people here in, in mm-hmm. the Twin Cities and uh, all around Minnesota that are really willing to help if you ask for it and say, hey, I, I'm interested in this thing. Tell me a little bit more about it. And I realized that's what I like to do, too. I like to be a connector for people and I like to help people achieve their goals and see you know, how we can break this down into a plan forward. Right. And so... Uh, being able to build MinStarter and help other entrepreneurs through this whole process has really been rewarding for me and for the entire MinStarter team. We built this company, you know, as I said, a public benefit corporation, and we want to just make sure we're giving back as much as possible. So how do you guys make your money? So we are, really good question, we don't make any money by listing people or listing campaigns on our portal. We don't charge anything to list it up there. Uh, We don't charge investors any sort of investment transaction fee or anything like that. We just want to give this away and make sure people have it as a way to to grow their businesses. Uh, We are funded in part by some foundation dollars that align with our mission. And so bringing these online tools to all different parts of Minnesota is a big part of both our mission and our partners. So if I come in and and contact you, it's free to use your portal. It is free to use our portal, but not to say that it's free to raise money through a crowdfunding campaign. Right. There because you still have to set involved. everything up. You have to That's talk to right. an attorney, have your paperwork together. But That's right. To use the system, 
the portal itself. To use our portal, it's absolutely free, yes. That's awesome. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. What are the top two things you want people interested in MinStarter to know? One, that uh, I've mentioned before that you need to get an attorney or have a legal team. Uh, if you're looking to raise money through an investment crowdfunding campaign, this is a legal contract that you are entering into uh, and it's a long-term relationship with your investors so we want to make sure that you are engaged with a legal team that preferably specializes in securities to help you navigate and make some of those decisions that are going to best set your business up for success mm -hmm. and make sure that your investors are aware of your growth goals and all of that sort of thing so we want to make sure that you do have a legal team and if you don't have a legal team we've got some fantastic people in our resource library that we're happy to introduce you to but that's a really big um piece of it right the second thing is um, we talked about you know having the time to set up a, a marketing plan to drive traffic to get awareness for your business mm -hmm. uh, your your campaign and your um, your offering so we need to make sure that you as the driver of both your business and this campaign have a plan to get the word out there because if you don't build that momentum you don't have a plan to you know reach a certain pool of, of potential investors mm -hmm. Who's going to do it for you? Right. Um, I don't know. I don't really have any more questions for Allie. Allie, do you have any questions for us or anything, any thoughts that you would like to share with Final us thoughts? today? On well, yeah. Thoughts? Yeah. I think what we can, what we I'd love to talk about is, you know, what are the things that people need to uh, have prepared if they are going to be talking, you know, you know, thinking about running an investment crowdfunding campaign? And that's something that I know Idea to Launch is able to help with is get yep. them set up with the Minnesota you know, Starter you, Package. What do you bring to the table when you, when, when you contact? MinStarter right. and what should you have ready to go. The biggest piece of that is a business plan. That is the foundation of your offering documents. You know, you want to make sure that your business plan is, like as I said earlier, up to date and reflecting what your growth goals are so your investors have the right expectations of how you're going to achieve this return on investment for them. Mm -hmm. And so that business plan is going to be really important. We've seen some people, you know, shy away from the traditional, you know, 10 to 12 page business plan in, in favor of a pitch deck, which is really helpful for uh, certain types of investors. You know, you want to go into an angel group or something, you present your pitch deck and that's really effective in, in a lot of cases. With a crowdfunding campaign, we're going to want to see you actually writing down what your approach is to these different um, growth plans and the different areas of your business plan so that that becomes the foundation of your offering document your legal team is going to work with to create that disclosure document in this case. Uh, the other things that you want to have brought to the table are your financial documents. So an up-to-date mm -hmm. income statement, up-to-date balance sheet, as well as uh, at least two years of projected formulas so that your investors can say, okay, this is at what rate they're going to uh, have growth. These are their milestones. And your business plan is accurately reflected in those numbers in your pro formas that you bring to the table. So if I am a startup and I want to see, hey, I think I've got most of my ducks in a row, or I think I've got about half the things that Allie just listed, but I'm listening um, someplace where I can't be writing these down or I don't want to come back to it, where can we find that list of documents you need? Is that somewhere on MinStarter? Dot com. If you contact us through MinStarter.com, uh, you can fill out a form there saying, I want to raise money and this is you know, what I'm going to use it for. Um, general questions. And then I would love to talk to you to go through that campaign health check with everyone so that we can really put together uh, those expectations, really lay out a roadmap for people mm -hmm. to use that as they go about their campaign setup. Uh, the MinVest.org uh, website is also a great place for information and resources for exactly th those lists of items as well great and we can link you to that too if that's something that makes sense yeah if you go to clients. idea to launch we'll link you up to min starter or <clears throat> excuse me you can call ally email is the best or submitting right through the website okay yes so minstarter.com m-n-s-t-a-r-t-e-r.com and you can go right there say i want to raise money and submit your information right there you'll get a call back and email back and we'll We'll move it forward. Uh, from and there. they're amazing. They're an amazing group amazing. of people. Oh, that's really. very nice. Thanks so much for stopping in, Allie. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. This has been really fun and a great experience. And great to be here at Studio Americana as well. Well, you know, the goal is is to have MinStarter come back on occasion to highlight the different things that they've get, got going on. I would So love whether to. it's events or certain campaigns that they'd like to highlight, 
I think it would be very fun for the audience to hear about the different things you've got going on because as the uh, as the crowdfunding and I'm you know I know you've got a few others that popped up but I'm calling you the crowdfunding site in Minnesota <laughs> um, it's just fun to see this expand and grow in the the communities that you're serving in the state it is so fun and if people you know if people have questions we are more than happy to have conversations provide answers you know go to the website you can submit questions right there and we can get back to you and we'll incorporate those into our frequently asked questions as well if we get some that you know are not already covered there so please you know ask questions talk to your neighbors about it this is a yep. new opportunity for both go out to the website and check investors. it out everybody can can go check it out and see if it's something they want to be involved in awesome excellent perfect yeah thanks Allie thank you Lisa thank, thank you Sarah, Sarah.